Hi everybody, welcome to today's NBS webinar. How can NBS help you in 2022? My name is Stephen Hamill, I'm Innovation Director here at NBS and uh, I'm the only speaker here uh, today, so it'll be uh, just myself. In terms of housekeeping, the webinar lasts probably 40 to 45 minutes. Everybody's on mute, but we would love as much uh, feedback as possible. So please, uh, any comments, any observations, pop them in the chat. And if you could stay on at the end and answer the, the survey questions as well, it's always uh, very much appreciated. So today's webinar is aimed at so both of our customer types at MBS, both uh, the specifiers, but also the manufacturers that provide product information that gets uh, specified on projects. And hopefully it's of interest, whether you're completely new to MBS or you're an established MBS user and you want to just like get the best out of the platform. Now, looking back at the 2021, I think there was three sort of main, sort of really big topics for the year. There was the, the sort of sustainability challenges in particularly highlighted at uh, COP26, uh, back sort of October, November in 21. Uh, there's the sort of slow movement to setting up the new uh, regulator and things like building safety bill, the golden thread. And there's also just the difference in how we work together, how we collaborate, the office not being like a place that everybody goes every day anymore and that sort of hybrid way of working that we're all sort of getting used to. And I think all three of those big topics really sort of change how you do your documentation uh, towards uh, when designing designing a building and specification being a big part of that, whether you're specifying sustainable outcomes, whether you're making sure you've got that digital record of specification development and changes through the timeline, and also no longer working on sort of desktop platform in the office, but needing to work everywhere from the site, from home, from the office, and collaborate digitally uh, in the cloud. In the webinar today, we're going to focus on uh, the two main uh, NBS platforms that we now have, uh, both cloud platforms, NBS Chorus uh, for collaborative specification writing, and NBS Source uh, for the delivery of manufacturer product information. We jump across just the agenda. The, we look at specification first, and hopefully that's of real interest also to the manufacturers that are watching to see how uh, your products are specified in the sort of wider context of the, the entire sort of uh, technical specification. We'll have a look at manufacturer product information. And then finally, we'll have a look at the integrations between platforms and interoperability that really make the platform sort of come together and work together. So firstly, uh, specification. I'm just going to do uh, three demonstrations of uh, areas of functionality that we really focused on in 2021 that will hopefully like set you up to, to, to get the best out of the system in 2022. So we look at office knowledge, uh, masters, office guidance. We look at publishing, things like the publication history and revisions. And then finally, we'll have a little look at the sort of more fine tuning, like the editing when you're assembling your specification. So if I jump across uh, now to NBS Chorus, uh, you'll see I'm uh, logged on and I can see the, the projects that I've got access to. I can also jump across, there's Chorus uh, Pro functionality here, jump across to the Masters area. And what you can do in the Masters area is set up specifications that are based on NBS, but that are partly developed so that you can save time and get better quality specifications from lessons learned on previous projects on your jobs as they come up. So you can see here in this Office Master, I've set up a, a specification for uh, building fabric items, building services items. This first part of the presentation is Uniclass 2015, but we'll look at some cause examples uh, later. And then across my organization, uh, what I can do here is control who has access. So who has read only, who has contributor, who's administrator access uh, as well. So I jump across and have a little look in the, the building fabric specification here. You can see I filtered this just to show the systems and I've got a number of partition systems, door systems, uh, handrail systems that, that are partly complete. So if I have a little look here, you can see I've written a little bit of a brief at the front of the specification, this uh, fictitious manufacturer that maybe I always use and 
a little notes on how to fill this in the context uh, of a project. You notice on the right hand side and also with the yellow dot here, I've supplemented the MBS guidance with notes uh, from that particular organization. So all MBS subscribers get the MBS guidance, but you can add uh, your office knowledge in addition there, right, just by clicking the button on the right hand side. I'll just show uh, another example here, I come down to say the handrail system. And because I've got the org notes tab open, that stays open on the right hand side. And uh, anybody using this master can see the notes and access uh, this content. It's then a case of copying and pasting from the master into your project and then uh, using it in the project you're working on. So if I come across here, I can select the uh, specifications that I'd like to pull across into my project. So we'll go for the 60 minute, the 30 minutes. We'll uh, pick one of the door sets and the handrail. And you see, as I select them, uh, it comes up that I've got four selected. Just drop down on the actions menu there and say that I'd like to copy from the masters to a specific uh, project. It's actually possible to do this between organizations as well, but I'm not going to demonstrate uh, that, that today. This is the sort of the basic workflow from the masters to a particular project. So let's go to the new town uh, office project. And then within that project, copy it to a, a particular specification. And that's going to take the latest version of the masters based on MBS and drop it into Newtown Office's technical specification. So jump across to my projects now, go to the Newtown Office's project technical specification. And you can see that now, instead of starting with just the MBS uh, template, I'm starting the con with the content that's uh, been partly completed by the expert in my organization on uh, partitions, for example. And you'll see that those org notes are there on the right hand side to, to help with the project uh, specification process. I jump across here to the handrail system and you see uh, exactly the same. In terms of the, the, the accessibility, uh, all of this information is available from the, the, this main project dashboard. So if you have a look here, these are the projects that I've got access to. But I can also now go to a, a list of all projects and uh, you can just scan across. You see a hyperlink for the projects I've got access to and then uh, no hyperlink there. But I can scan across and see what the project is, who's the administrator and then uh, request uh, access. It's similar thing on the masters. If I jump across to the masters, I can see the masters I have access to. But jumping across to all masters, I can see all of the masters across my organization. And again, see which ones I'm admin and which of my colleagues are admin on uh, other masters. And there's a little tab right at the top here for org notes as well, where you can just see, if you think of these as little labels that you can put against the different content sets. Like for example, uh, this little note here is against clause A31150 in the cause preliminary content set. So just having that real ease of management of information. Uh, the other uh, bit of information that's worth looking at here is if you go into your organization settings, uh, clearly you can see all of your, uh, your users who are admin, who aren't admin. And another thing you can get from the organization settings area is a list of all of the style sheets that you may use for when you're publishing your specification. And then here you can make one of them uh, in default. If you're an admin, you can work on them, keep them inactive until it's ready, then make them active. And we're going to look at publishing uh, in a second. Uh, if, I, if I jump across to another web browser where I'm logged in as a colleague, so I'm logged in here as my colleague Kate. Uh, she hasn't been given the admin full permissions. So it's when she comes to projects and says, show me all projects, it's possible to hide away certain project titles, make them confidential. And uh, if you're not an admin, you haven't got the ability to, to sort of take control of a project, you've got to drop them an email and ask for an invite. So you can see here, uh, a kid's a member of the Newtown Offices project's contributor, but she doesn't have access at the moment to the Mountain House project, but could get it uh, by requesting that uh, of, of her colleague. Okay, so now we'll have a little look at uh, publishing which comes in nicely from the sort of style sheets and i'll go back to that same project newtown offices 
But this time, instead of looking at the, the Uniclass 2015 technical specification, we'll uh, look at a, a, a set of prelims. So what's been happening before here is the specification, the prelims have been uh, being developed. And every time it's published, so recorded as PDF and either sent by email or uploaded to the uh, extranet commentator environment, you can have a record of that inside of uh, the specification uh, project itself. So you can see that my colleague Kate published this three hours ago, and you can even download a copy of that to see what was actually uh, published. So this is a, a star sheet which I've uh, started a little bit with a background logo and the, the, the MBS logo at the top. But you get a bit of a sort of document control sheet at the front where you can talk about things like what the revision status is, uh, what it's suitable for, and then a clickable a table of contents uh, as well. So what I'm going to demonstrate now is doing a second publication where I'll make some changes and you, you'll see how revisions are highlighted. So I'll maybe come into these three or four clauses at the top and add a new clause, maybe uh, do an amend to one or two of them as well. So that's PM40. So I jump back to the, the, the prelims here, jump into PM40, and I'll just make some really quick uh, quick changes here. I put a clause uh, Imagine if it's already been issued to the project team, uh, potentially this is something that you, you want to highlight as uh, being new. And then coming in here, I just uh, amend that particular clause and I'll do the same maybe for, uh, for this one here. So it doesn't matter what changes I made. But basically, I've added a clause as new and I've amended two different clauses. When I now come and publish that, that can be highlighted in the publish uh, document. So I'm going to go and publish these two sections, jump across, publish the sections, publishing two PDF formats, and I'd like to compare with the previous publication. So over time, this list can, can grow. And a large project might have a, a whole set of a previous publication, so it is good to have a good sort of naming convention and good approach here for how you're going to manage the information that comes out of your spec. Uh, but yeah, I'd like to compare it with that particular publication. I'd like to save a copy. And then it's carried forward the metadata from that previous publication, so you can easily increment it. So I come here and just sort of uh, take the numbers up a little bit. Put a new uh, set of notes in. This is where yeah, you choose your style sheet. So it's going with our office default, which is my sort of MBS purple style sheets, but I could toggle that and go to where a different one should I wish. And then as I click publish, it takes all of that rich data from MBS chorus and sort of like freezes it in time, that point where it's been published, it's been signed off and generates that, that PDF record, which I imagine then you'd, you'd sort of put together with any other documentation like uh, word documents or drawings or schedules, photographs, and sort of push it up uh, to a commentator environment. But if you look at how that looks now, front page looks very similar. It's, the revision number has been incremented and the, the, the name of the documents have gone up. But as you come down, you'll see that I haven't changed PM35 at all. But what I have done is uh, revised in some way a section PM40. And if we just jump across and have a look at that, uh, very clearly, you can see that this clause has been added as new, whereas uh, the second clause and the fourth clause have uh, had their content revised. So when you're talking about things like a golden thread of information, being really clear on your requirements, it's really important that you don't just write sort of robust specifications, but that you have a good uh, sort of information management, revision management uh, strategy to make sure that the you're tracking all that information through the the project timeline. Okay, and the last thing I'd like to show on the specification side uh, is the, the sort of improved editing uh, functionality that we now have as well. So I'm going to go to this uh, specification here, a core specification, and I'm going to add an entire new section and then uh, play around with the content inside it. So a nice little tip here if you want to add user content is you just search for the word template. It's, it's there in it. Is it, is it 
tip in our support area. Some really good articles here if you ever want to sort of learn as much about chorus as you possibly can. But you, you search for the word template and you can add this blank a section which you can give any sort of uh, coding to itself. So I click the plus button and that's going to drop into the job. And uh, I'm just going to call that uh, call it B99. And I just call it user section. And that's going to drop in there in code order. So if I'd called it Z99, it would have appeared right at the bottom. And you can see that MPS gives you a sort of clause to get started, but you can come and add new items before uh, and after as well. I'm just going to do some speed typing here to sort of like demonstrate some of the functionality. Please excuse the, the text I put in. It may not be a fantastic examples, but so, but anyway, uh, yeah, you can write free text. You can add rows at any point. So I could put a row in between two and uh, uh, three here. If you add it just below, it comes in as a sort of a sibling, but you can also do it as an indented row to try and give it sort of a bit more meaning, like it's a child of the previous one. And uh, you can keep on indenting uh, if you want. One thing that's interesting here is you can toggle the row type. So instead of it being like a full sentence, you could change that or uh, what I call sort of name value pair. So now I've got a, a name and a space for the value as well. So I can maybe put that as address and uh, do the same with an item uh, below there as well. So this time I'm going to go below at the sort of same level in the hierarchy. I'll toggle that to uh, a row type as well. So you get quite a lot of flexibility to get the clause structure exactly how you'd like it. And another uh, thing we've done recently is allow you to put tables in as well. So sometimes you do want to have tabulated information, not just name value pair. And you can do that from the, the left hand side menu here. So I'll add a table. And that comes in as a, a bit of a sort of template to get started. And you just sort of click on the table itself and you get a nice uh, sort of edit edit dialog which pops up and there's a, there's a right click function here where you can put new rows in below above to the left to the right you can highlight things as headers either the rows or the, the columns and then uh can't really get talk and type at the same time but uh yeah you, you come in and fill this with data and it looks really nice when you click done so uh really quickly here Clipboard, so I don't have to write it all over again. But there. Uh, yeah, you can see it would you can create something quite complex, but it you can see that just in the last sort of two, three minutes, I've created quite a complex clause just by using some of the nice functionality you get off the, the three dots on the left hand side. So that's a, a sort of 10, 15 minutes. Taster, some of the latest functionality that we, we, we put together in 2021 that's hopefully, in particular for the course, pro users out there can, can really help you get the best out of the specification side of MBS. Reusing your office knowledge, things like masters, organization notes, getting the permissions model right across your organization. And then things around publication, history, revisions, and then finally creating your own content to supplement the MBS content as well. And, making it look exactly as you want it in terms of both clause structure and also the printout. Now, the next part of the presentation, we're gonna look at the manufacturer product information. We'll have a look at the, the content structure that enables things like a comparison between products either within the same manufacturer's product range or between different manufacturers. We'll have a look at how manufacturers actually take control of their own data whether that's things like 
data sheets and contact information, the products themselves, which is hopefully of interest to specifiers as well. How is this information getting to you? And we also have a look at the web integration feature, which allows you to have the same information on your website that the specifiers also see in MBS Source. So let's jump across and have a look at uh, MBS Source. So from the MBS homepage, uh, you've got Chorus, and you've also got a source. So let's uh, have a little look at it. So I'm just going to, uh, you've got the search bar at the top, type your search and you can search for any manufacturer, literature, case studies, products, etc. But I'm going to go to some examples that I already know, so I'm nicely show uh, things off. So if you know the product name, you just start typing and after four or five characters, you can jump sort of straight across and find it. But what you'll see on source is every product, whether it's a radiator or a roof light or a steel beam, will always have the same sort of generic data structure. So if you start right at the top of the page here, it's always classified first and foremost by Uniclass 2015, which gives a lot more granularity than, to the cause and classification structure. But you see on the hover over the number of, like the actual code itself is it's a bit of a sort of secondary feature. It's the fact it's a framed roof light is a sort of plain language in this example. If you go further down the page, like you can get the precise classification code. And the good news for uh, cause users is we also position it against the relevant uh, clauses, either in our sort of sort of large commercial specification library or the small works specification library uh, as well. But yeah, starting at the top of the page, we'll come back to variants uh, in a second. I want, just want to demonstrate this little feature just for a second. Every product gets this uh, unique URL, which you can copy to the clipboard. And if we just look at that in the web browser, it's just a little domain name that we own and we resolve that little short code so it takes you back to that same product. And we'll, we'll, we'll keep those uh, URLs alive so you can put them in your other documentation you put together with Word or 3D model information, Excel schedules, emails, or what have you. But if you ever want to have a hyperlink which goes back, you can get that nice little short hyperlink from, from that button. A little summary, which I think you also see in the, the search returns, We'll look at the add to spec uh, in a second. You've got the contact details on the right hand side. So any technical queries at all, you can give the manufacturer a phone call or you can drop them a little message through there as well. And then uh, compared to the images that we had in MBS Plus, our idea product selector, the imagery is like greatly improved. So if you are looking at a product and you want to sort of see in a bit more detail, you've got these really nice nice images, which manufacturers can unlimited, put as many images as they want up against uh, the product. And then as we sort of uh, come down the page here, all of the products should have some guidance here on what that particular product is suitable for. So if it's an insulation board, is it suitable for a pitch roof or a flat roof or an external wall or what have you? So you can see that this particular roof light is uh, suitable for most uh, flat roof constructions and coverings, for example, the following materials. And again, you can always contact the manufacturer if you've got any specific questions. Then there's a bit of a description from the manufacturer before going into some sort of general information. So high level information that's not specific to that product type, like say a roof light. Manufacturers can provide guidance, which you see in sort of gray text. And then you get into the specification data itself. Again, guidance and gray text. And the values that you see here are the values that have been provided by the manufacturer, but aligned to the MBS uh, specification structure. So if you opened if this is the framed roof light clause in MBS, you'd see that same data structure in terms of the material of the frame, the U value, the type of glazing. So each manufacturer is providing their technical content in that same structure. Uh, as the MBS generic clause, encouraging uh, manufacturers now to provide environmental credentials. Uh, this manufacturers talk about the, the material of origin, where it gets manufactured. Uh, we're also trying to get things like embodied carbon recyclability uh, information uh, as, as well. Just jump across and show one uh, other example. Do a free text search this time and say, like, have some sort of roof underlay. I could filter by the precise 
their classification. I can filter by third party certification. When we did a focus groups, the, 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 the prominence of third party certification was something that uh, our specifier said was extremely important uh, to them when making product selections. So you can see for this particular product, not a roof light this time, it's a vapor permeable sheet. The generic structure is still the same guidance and application, short URL classification. But this one here has the, the sort of third party certification of its uh, uh, technical performance claims. And you can jump down and uh, see more information about uh, those particular certificates. So, for example, this is a BM Charter certificate that was first issued in 2011 last issued in 2019 and has a particular expiry date and the content like pdf content you can quickly download if you do want to have a, a copy of that locally uh, in addition to what's in source itself when we talk about the standard technical structures of the products i'd like to demonstrate that by searching for uh, concrete blocks so start to search for aggregate concrete blocks I'm not going to jump straight to a product this time. I'm not going to do a free tech search. I want to see the, the products that MBS have classified in this particular uh, structure. And what I'm going to do here is just pick uh, three from different manufacturers. So one there from, uh, that's Semex. Uh, let's do one from Lignocytes. And we'll finish with one from uh, Thomas Armstrong as well. Now, because they've got the same data structure, <coughs> pardon me, I can now sort of look across here and you're seeing that commonality of data rather than one manufacturer structure in one particular way another manufacturer uh, another so as you scan across there things like the tolerance category d1 d1 to bs uh, whatever the standard is here bs 7701 i think uh, the same sort of units uh, there is so kilograms meter cubed for the net density etc so it's putting that information at your fingertips and make sure that the specifier doesn't have to go and look at website one, website two, website three, where they can come together and get that right information uh, just at their fingertips in that sort of single source uh, here. And there's that, that, that content, but not in the comparison form. And you can compare products within the same manufacturer. You know, it's like demonstrate variance as well. So that's where a product has varying properties depending on uh, something that changes. So something like the thickness or the layers of glass can change the properties. So I've got one, uh, one more here, I think it's a rationale a window. This comes in two variations. It comes in a triple glazed version and it also comes in a double glazed version. If we just scan down and have a look at the, uh, the, the performance of this particular product, okay. you can see here the whole window U value this changes as it goes from a triple glaze to a to a, a double glaze unit. So if it's a 1.3 and then uh, down to 0 0.8 there. And you can see that by uh, changing the value at the top. But we've also got this handy button right at the top, which allows you to compare uh, the variance. So just click the button here and it's going to put both combinations that are possible, the triple glaze and the double glaze side by side. So you can just sort of scan across and see I see the similarities, they're both to the same standard, both don't have frame horns or what have you, both have SC certificates, but the, the U value changes between the triple glazed and the double glazed example. So please, uh, after this session, if you haven't already explored source, look at the fantastic content that's out there. And it, it comes from, I mean, it's about 1200 uh, manufacturers now as well. There's architectural products, structural, uh, external works, building services, so a whole host of uh, manufacturer content that's, uh, that's uh, free to use uh, on that website. How do the manufacturers put this information in is a question that I uh, get asked from specifiers, but also get asked obviously from manufacturers as well, because they, they want to control this data and make sure it's, it's current. So we have something called the Manufacturer Partner Platform. Uh, let's just jump across and look at that. Now I'm going to demonstrate that by pretending I'm like the manufacturer NBS. And we don't manufacture products, but we do have some uh, products from the, the National BIM Library in here. 
So I'm not sure I'm going to show a real like behind the scenes for a like one of our customer manufacturers, but it's, it's the same principles. So they log into this area. It's a bit like if you're selling something on uh, eBay or if you had a like Airbnb or what have you, you, you control the data and you publish what you want to be published. So Kate here, who's, uh, I hope Kate doesn't mind being used as the example when not logged on, it's my, my, myself. But she's in control of the MBS area here. So if I just go through some of these options on the left-hand side, you see that she's got full control all over things like the brand and the description, the banner, so specialist knowledge and tools, for the banner, MBS. There's the MBS logo, there's the banner. And somewhere on here is the line, yeah, specialist knowledge and tools. And if you work down the left-hand side, uh, you can put your social media, your web links. You've got control over what case studies and products are shown on the, the front page. Full control over what your address details are. And if you want to put key names, like your sort of head of technical content manufacturers can, can have that in source as well. And they can also control which users across their organization can access this either read-only or to make changes. And all of this company information at the top changes instantly. So you can come in, change your manufacturer information, and it, it uh, instantly updates on source. If we come into the source listings here, the documentation, things like case studies, all of the PDFs, third party certification is all self serve. So you can push this information up again, change it live as soon as you click, click update. So put your case studies up, get a nice little editor where you can uh, edit this information and publish it. The products, uh, it's a sort of collaboration with our MBS technical team who help manufacturers get the right classification, use the right terminology, etc. But if I just show an example here for, uh, let's find, see if I find a good product to look at. Actually, I look at a, a transformer. So if you imagine I was a manufacturer that did liquid immersed transformers, you can see here that this is where you put the technical information in. It's like a, a more technical, more complex version of selling something on eBay, where you get the boxes that you fill in, you can add guidance notes uh, to them, and you work with our technical team to sort of push that information uh, live. And then once it's live, make any necessary edits. You can link the product uh, with things like images, digital objects, third party certification, case studies. So you're really creating a rich data set of information. As you say, MBS will help you classify things correctly. And then for the specification properties themselves, these are the same properties that the specifier sees inside of MBS course. I'm gonna actually jump across and log in myself on here and just show some of the drop downs because they're, they're quite nice to see, I think. So I come into the partner platform uh, here and just log on as Stephen this time. Um, yeah, the user MBS. Let's find it by the. So yeah, I've got admin permission. So I'm seeing a few extra, extra things that aren't when they're in the basic one. But as it come down uh, here, when you come into these uh, boxes here, you get the same drop down values that the specifier gets. So is it a floor mounted or a wall mounted boiler? You can do a free text of the NOx emission or pick from typical drop down value, and that the guidance is there on what the the unit should be, and you can add guidance, uh, put multiple values if there's a specification choice there. And on the right hand side is the area with comments. So going back uh, and forward. And then maybe the final thing just to show in the, the partner platform uh, itself here is the, the resources at the bottom and the ability to have the, the web integration. So creating a, a little frame which you can drop into your own a website as a manufacturer. So whether the specifier goes to your website or goes to MBS source, they're seeing that same information. And you can have one of these with all of your products in or just pick a sort of an individual one. So I've come in, if I just wanted the 
low temperature hot water towel rail you can see all the same information from sources in that little frame and just want to demonstrate that on some manufacturers websites live at the moment my sort of tip for google is if you do a search and then put like minus site and site you don't want to show this is showing all of the mentions of mbs source which on on the uk the mbs.com so some of the promotional uh, let's, let's see so we'll open newton i know some of these examples newton waterproofing is a good example i think i think Schluter. the lorian one's just a, a press release i think it's a good one and there's a cuba goes yes this one so yes each one of these manufacturers that are reasonably high in the, the google search returns just preparing for this this webinar i noticed are using the the web integration tool so there's all of the same information from the specification inside the manufacturer's website itself completely different manufacturers here so here's a toilet cubicle manufacturer here's a manufacturer that does uh, different waterproofing uh, solutions and then go through and uh, see their products and then finally here's a uh, uh, some of the different uh, Schluter systems uh, as, as well. And you, the flexibility over the colors. So the orange color here matches the orange from the Schluter website. Uh, they've got sort of the greenish color here for Newtown and the, the cubicle center. They've gone with sort of greenish uh, blue as well. I'm going to show in a second how some of the integration works to get the information back into the specification as well. So you've seen that add the spec button a few times. We'll, we'll come back to that one. So the final part of the presentation today is on integrations. And we're going to look at three things. We'll, we'll have a look at Uniclass 2015 and how is a sort of interoperable classification format that, that enables integrations, not just between MBS systems, between MBS systems and other systems. And software platforms that are out there which like we've, we've not seen until we find out they're using uh, Uniclass. We will look a little bit on the model integration side so things like your, your vector works your autocad your revit models making sure that that information is synchronized with the spec and we'll have a look at that add the spec button that we we just sort of previewed earlier in terms of connecting the manufacturer product information with the, the technical spec so in terms of Uniclass. Uh, as I said, we've got two main platforms, Chorus and Source, but we also have Uniclass 2015 in terms of a sort of key resource that sort of helps glue everything together. So we jump across to Uniclass 2015. I'm not going to do a full Uniclass presentation today, but if you want to know more about it, go to the MBS website, really nice page here that introduces it. And then you've also got all of the tables that you can download and a little widget to get the classification codes out. And in the presentation today, you've seen classification codes against specification items and manufacturer product information. If you go to the, our events page on the mbs.com, you'll have to scroll down a little bit. There were some really good Uniclass events uh, earlier in sort of 2021. And I just want to pick out two case studies. The, the first one was how Uniclass 2015 is being used by the Department for Education on their sort of new schools and uh, retrofitting existing schools and there was a really fantastic presentation from Bon Brian Digital and representation from Department for Education uh, back, back back May uh, 2021 and if we just zoom into like what, what we're actually seeing on the screen there is that's a 3D IFC model but all of the IFC entities have been classified using the Uniclass 2015 classification system so individual classification for the buildings from the entity table, all the different space types, you know, classrooms, corridors, gymnasiums, outdoor seating areas, the activities that are going on in those spaces. And then finally, all of the systems and products in that sort of huge model. So even though it's MBS that are developing Uniclass, recognizing that it's got lots and lots of different uh, use cases. And the second presentation that was really good was just demonstrating that Uniclass isn't just for buildings, it's for the wider built environment, for infrastructure. In this case study is from Environment Agency. I think I've seen another one recently from uh, Highways uh, as well, but going through what are the, the assets that the Environment Agency has to manage the most. 
and make sure each one has a classification code so that they can be defined once. What information the environment agency care about in terms of managing and keeping up to date, and then building that sort of data structure around the, the classified items. So I, I think if you are invested in information management, Uniclass two uh, really good presentations are there. In terms of what's coming up with Uniclass, we're, we're continuing to work really hard on it. We want to improve the the website, so like better widgets, better searching, better synonyms, the ability to browse it more easily, copy and paste the classification straight from the, the, the search results. And also working with government and industry to, to fill any gaps. So there may be certain sectors that haven't got a full comprehensive classification set that, that, that's needed. So we have two of my colleagues at MBS, uh, Sarah Delaney, Chris Vickers, that are working in a number of days each week as part of the government and industry interoperability group. And that's what one of the key work streams, uh, I think it's work stream, work stream one actually is uh, classification. So it's gonna be a whole, a whole set of extra, extra good stuff coming out on Uniclass in uh, uh, 2022. The next thing I want to have a look at in terms of integrations is uh, just to, to, to to show the sort of model and specification information side. So on the screen here, you can see our, our plugin for the 3D modeling environments. So this is the same plugin that works on the Mac and Vectorworks or our archives, Mac or PC. It also uh, works and probably have most of our users in Autodesk Revit where I'm uh, demonstrating it uh, here. But basically at the same time as you're doing your design and you're doing your annotations and your schedules, you can work on the specification, you can add things to the specification, you can uh, annotate from the specification. So uh, this particular model on the left hand side is linked to both the architectural spec and the building services spec for the, the Lakeside uh, restaurant project in a NBS course. And that can come in now to the architectural specification and do all of the things that you can do in the cloud, change permissions, add content, uh, at the same time that you're doing the design. And you can link any of these items uh, to, to the items in the specification. So for example, clicking on that a window unit, you can see that they're linked together. And once they're linked together, you can use things like the classification code and the type ID in any annotations. So I don't know what I've got open here, but uh, that was, that's a ceiling ceiling plan and if I click on any of uh, these ceilings you know, pick something that's notoriously hard to click on you can see that in the annotation there as well but this is uh, ceiling SS3025 what have you suspended ceiling system above the kitchen area and you can get that there from the from the ceiling plan what I've got here so all the different floor uh, covers and similarly uh, whichever Floor cover, I pick uh, select here. Uh, I've linked that to the specification and I've used those in the, the annotations as well. So you can see, see them pop up. If I change something here, you, you get a sort of notification that it's now out of sync with the model. So if I change floor 004, because that was say a typo to 104, there's a potential problem here because in all the drawings, it might still say if flow 004 in the spec, it's now saying 104, maybe a, a trivial example, but you click on the model button here and it tells you that there's issues now. And we've got a warning because somebody's changed the, the codes 104, 004, and you click the fix button and it'll correct all of the, the codes in the, the drawings and schedules or material take off or what have you. You can also use this little model a report to show you what, what you have uh, specified and connected together and what you haven't yet connected together. And that's quite a nice way of just sort of visualizing what you still uh, got left to do and just links the design with the spec writing process and uh, it makes, makes life easier by connecting uh, information. So for example, here I click here and if it's seen it, are you wanting to specify this sort of FF&E, or you, you leaving it to the interior designer or what have you. 
but uh, yeah, that's still a report of what hasn't been linked up. But yeah, just connecting information in one database, which is your sort of 3D model database with another database, which is your well-structured NBS chorus uh, cloud. And I think the final thing I was uh, wanting to show is the, the this add to spec button. And we'll show that from sort of three, three contexts. So let's we'll add a, a roof light uh, first of all. And we'll do that from inside of chorus. So let's just go and add a, a roof light system. And drop that into the job. And then in terms of the main unit, I'll add a framed roof light. So in terms of connecting the specification, the generic spec with the manufacturer content that we've seen already in NBS source, this manufacturer button, when you click on it, then it opens up the panel on the right hand side. So previously today we've looked at the guidance panel, we've looked at the org notes panel, you can add project specific notes as well. But whenever you click on that manufacturer field, you can see there it's uh, showing the manufacturer content. That's exactly the same manufacturer content that you'd see if you browsed for framed roof lights in source itself. And then having a little look down, you've got the guidance on application, you've got the title, there's the add spec button that we'll look at in a second. Now, as I come down and read the, the, the various guidance and look at the technical content that's aligned to the spec, the add the spec button just stays prominent right at the top. And then if you want to specify this particular roof light, yeah, you click the button and that drops uh, straight into the job. The other way of specifying, let's just uh, click undo on that one is you might want a bit more space to look at the product uh, the product information. So I just drop that particular window to the left-hand side of my screen. Give me a second to set this up. In this one on the right-hand side, I might want to search for framed roof lights in source on that sort of wide screen. Or we could maybe look at the, the, the roof light we were uh, looking at earlier, which I think was the Neo Advanced, so it's the former. So I go and get this, you can favorite them if you want as well, and it drops into your favorites area. But you see you have the add the spec button there as well. So it's a framed roof light, framed roof light, you've done some complex search, or you've gone to your favorites, you've filtered things, you click the add the spec button. It's not clever enough to know that it's going to go exactly in this window. So you get a little helper window, copy product, go to chorus, paste it in. So I've copied it, another tick box, go to chorus. And I should, I'll right click it so people can see I'm clicking paste. But when you do that, all of the technical information that's an MBS source just drops straight across into the specification itself. And once that's, uh, that's in there, uh, all of the information synchronizes. So there's the new advanced uh, product on the right hand side and I can pick the values here uh, based on the guidance uh, on the right hand side. So just uh, again, saving you go to lots of different websites where information is all in different structure by connecting the two together. And I guess the, the third way that add the spec button can be used is in the, let's do this one here as a sort of system example. From the manufacturer's website uh, itself. So there's the washroom cubicles, privacy full height, toilet cubicle, I like that add. Uh, so I'm going to come back to course here and uh, add a cubicle in there. And you see that the screen gets made smaller in course. All, everything's still usable. Even though it's a small screen, I can still come and do all of the things. Uh, add content down at the bottom. To add a, a cubicle system in. Just going to try and uh, find it. Here it is. And then it's a case of clicking yeah, add spec. Coming across and on the, the left hand side there, I click and paste. It'll just give you a, are you sure before you do it? But I'm going there from the washroomcubicles.co.uk website, clicking the add spec button, and then dropping that. Uh, straight into the specification. 
So we get connecting data sets, whether it's in the MBS environment or whether it's the manufacturer's website uh, talking uh, to, to, to MBS cores. So we're really trying to bring together the specifiers with the, the construction product information and manufacturers. So yeah, thanks for listening, everybody today. I hope that's, uh, that's been of interest to everyone. I hope everyone's enjoyed this sort of live demonstration as opposed to sort of death by PowerPoint. I delivered quite a few PowerPoints this year and it's nice just to, just to show the software off. But as a summary, uh, those that are interested in MBS, find out more information on MBS course here. So go to the mbs.com and go to the course area. If you're a manufacturer, uh, products and you'd like to be specified more, find out more about MBS uh, source here or our sort of dedicated site for manufacturers, MBS for manufacturers as well. And I think what I would say also is if you're a specifier and there's manufacturers that you'd love to see inside of source that currently aren't, please drop a list in the chat and uh, our MBS, my MBS colleagues will get in touch with the manufacturers and see if we can uh, persuade them to put their information in the source uh, as, as well. Uh, useful pages in the MBS that I just want to highlight, the case study pages, uh, I think are particularly strong. If you want to learn about something maybe a small architectural practice, how, can you give us an example of how MBS has worked for a, a particular smaller architectural practice or building services engineer, uh, how, how Manufacturers actually using Chorus itself to write specifications on more complex projects. If you're just interested in the prelims content, it's a great case study here from uh, Hollis. So yeah, a whole host of case studies on the specification side. And if you go across to the MBS for Manufacturers website, we have case studies uh, across there uh, as well. So manufacturers and how they've sort of made the success of their MBS subscription. And then on both the MBS main site and the MBS for manufacturers sites, we've now got 18 months worth of uh, webinars on all sorts of topics. So you can sit there, all of the ones in the past and just sort of watch them on demand. Whether you're interested in one of the technical guidance and NBS, NBS for small practice, if you want to know more about top 26 key takeaways, you can sit there and there's a, a huge amount of sort of learning learning material uh, there online. And I think the last thing I just wanted to point out, mainly for existing customers, is what we call the MBS Academy, which is a, a location where there's a whole host of online, on-site public training resources that you can come to and uh, just make sure that you get all of the, the, the very best out of your MBS subscription by seeing what the products uh, can do can, can do for you. So yeah, please find out more about Source, find out more about Chorus and keep the conversation going with us. We love uh, hearing from all of our uh, users and people that want to use MBS in future. So our telephone number's there, email address, and uh, please stay on for a couple of minutes at the end and uh, answer the survey questions. Thank you very much. Take care, bye-bye.